Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. February 4th, James Cash Penny. Penny built his life on the value of honesty, and it paid off, literally. When he was 26, he scraped together enough to buy his first dry goods store, The Golden Rule. Within a decade, he owned 30 more stores. Today, there are 850 JCPenney stores in the U.S. and Puerto Rico. And when he died, he left a personal estate of $35 million. In a time of buyer beware business practices, Penny's philosophy of treat others the way you would like to be treated earned him the country's trust and business. And long after his death, the seeds he sowed continue to produce good fruit. One of his many philanthropic projects was the Penny Retirement Community in Florida, a nonprofit, caring Christian community for retired ministers and missionaries, which still thrives today. In 2019, the J.C. Penny store in Bangalore, India, received the Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design Award from the leading program for green buildings and communities worldwide. Today's story presents a look into the personal side of Penny's life. The poison of the past can blind us with bitterness, but God's truth will set us free. For James Cash Penny, being genuine was everything. Even when he reached retirement age, Penny kept up a busy speaking schedule. In the late 1930s, a church 30 miles outside of his hometown of Hamilton, Missouri, invited him to be a guest speaker. Penny accepted the invitation, but not without some dread, mainly because it was a place so close to where he'd grown up, and it was a place where he had been badly hurt. When he was 14 years old, he sat in a pew at the Hamilton Church, where his father had pastored for many years, Penny watched church elders condemn his father and call him a heretic. His heresy? Pastor Penny had asked the church for financial support for his family and to start a Sunday school for children. After the verdict on his father, Penny remembered his mother standing up beside her husband and in a firm voice saying, I believe as Jimmy does. The church excommunicated both of them. The very people who claimed to know God and follow His ways were the ones who threw Penny's family out of the church for wanting to teach children? Hypocrites. I bitterly resented the incident, Penny wrote. Now he was back in Missouri, willing to keep his speaking engagement, but anxious to get this day over with. He hurried into the church office and hoped not to run into any familiar Hamilton faces. Once seated, the church's minister explained the order of service to Penny, beginning with how the communion service would work. A new panic gripped Penny. He had never taken communion in his life. He hadn't been baptized, nor was he a church member. He did have a reputation for representing Christian beliefs and morals, but the truth was, he had built his life primarily on honesty and openness. Is something wrong, Mr. Penny? The minister said. Penny cleared his throat. Uh, it's just that I've never taken communion, he said. For years, Penny had worked hard to avoid this exact situation. As a public figure, he was always under scrutiny. If he didn't take the cup and the bread, someone would notice. Everyone would think he was a hypocrite. His stature in the community and the country was at stake. On the other hand, if he did take communion, he felt that he would be a hypocrite before God. He led a moral and generous life, but he felt he wasn't truly worthy of publicly declaring himself as a member of God's family. Practicing the golden rule in my business benefited everyone, he wrote. Surely, that was being a practical Christian. I had to pass through many, many clashes with life before recognizing that what seemed to me to be sufficient 
was much less than what Christ had taught. Penny looked at the minister and said, what should I do? I feel unworthy. Well, are you a Christian? The minister asked. Penny felt the weight of the question. Was his commitment to Christ real? Genuine faith meant genuine commitment. Did he really trust God or had he just been trying to be worthy of acceptance on his own terms? Penny's thoughts jumped back to that judgment scene in the Hamilton church where his father had pastored. He heard his mother's bold statement, I too believe. Yes, he said, I am a Christian. Bitter thoughts of the Hamilton hypocrites lifted and his focus turned to Christ and all he had done on Penny's behalf. He said, as though a voice was speaking into my mind, there came the words gently spoken, don't be afraid. Penny later would write, it is not enough for men to be upright and moral men. I must admit, it was only after I assumed the responsibility of church membership, thus rendering unto God the things that are God's, that I realized just how merely attending church regularly is not enough. For all men, there must be yet one more thing, giving oneself over to God's purpose. Penny had determined to show God that he was not a hypocrite, but by relying on himself and his behavior, he had come up short. In his fear, Penny had missed out on the peace and strength that come from truly following God. Now he realized that being genuine wasn't about being perfect. It meant giving himself entirely over to God. That evening, Penny phoned his wife. He told her that he had decided to be baptized and join the church family. He was 67 years old when he was finally baptized. For J.C. Penny, a genuine commitment to God was everything. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. Matthew 7, 21. And Philippians 3, 9 says, I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. Are you afraid you might not be worthy enough for God? Give him your fear and step out in simple obedience. The poison of the past can blind us with bitterness, but God's truth will set us free. Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. For today's story, we have a free one-page group discussion sheet available on our website. Please join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.